We should ask Donald Trump. You talked about black men would be with you. Where's a black man being uh, being nominated by you for your cabinet? Has anyone noticed there's no black that has been nominated on his cabinet? That needs to be raised. Congressman Byron Donalds appeared on CNN, where the conversation took an interesting turn. As a black man, Byron Donalds was asked to respond to Al Sharpton's claim about the lack of black members in Donald Trump's cabinet. Byron Donalds didn't hold back and completely dismantled the argument. Let's hear what both Byron Donalds and Al Sharpton had to say. This is one response you won't want to miss. Congressman, you have been a, a very vocal and effective surrogate for Trump and for his campaign and, frankly, the Republican Party. What is your response to this criticism? Uh, I think it's criticism where people are upset that they still lost this election. And so if you were going to ask Reverend Al or anybody else in the Democrat Party, they're still looking at their wounds about the fact that this did not work out the way that they thought it was going to. That being said, Donald Trump's cabinet is about people who are going to implement his agenda. And he's not done, by the way. You have Susie Wiles, the first woman ever to serve as chief of staff. Mm -hmm. You have Marco Rubio, a Cuban-American who's going to serve as secretary of state, representing America across the globe when it comes to foreign policy. You have Tulsi Gabbard going to be at DNI. So many others that are coming, and there's still slots to, to be filled. So I think everybody needs to pump the brakes and just wait and see what happens. Do you think Democrats are putting form over substance? Um, I, absolutely. Look, even if you look at how the Democrats filled the Joe Biden cabinet, they wanted to have a piece of every identity, but did they get the job done? Did they actually serve the interest of the American people? Because here's what I know. Whether you black or Hispanic, if the border is unsecure, excuse me, <clears throat> Alejandro Mayorkas, if the border is unsecure, does that help people in their everyday lives? No, it does not. And so what we, what Donald Trump's election is about is bringing competency and reality back to D.C. in the White House, making sure that the job gets done on behalf of the American people, regardless of their race, regardless of their religion, regardless of... Joy Reid's latest comments have caused quite a stir. A lot of people are questioning how she keeps getting away with making statements that not only create division, but could actually put people in harm's way. The things she says don't just spark debates. They have real consequences. In the clip you're about to see, you'll understand why so, why so many are concerned about her rhetoric. Let's take a closer look and talk about why this has everyone talking. I mean, one of the things that Russ Vote is advocating for is, is the elimination of all the post Watergate norms in order to weaponize the DOJ. And he also is somebody that's advocating for deploying the military against U.S. citizens in order to, to quelch dissent or protest. So when you have a guy like John McEntee and that database, part of the pre-vetting isn't just, oh, they check off all the boxes in terms of like their professional skills. It's also that, oh, they're sufficiently loyal that they will allow us to do all these things that otherwise would be illegal or not allowed to be done. And the thing is, you cannot drill, you can't say that enough. And I want you to say more about that because you're talking about deploying the U.S. military. Remember, Mark Esper, who was Donald Trump's Secretary of Defense, for a while, told him, no, you cannot shoot American citizens. You can't have the military shoot American citizens. He's going to replace people in the, in the Department of Defense with people who will say you can, and that you can deploy the military against protesters, that you can uh, arrest journalists um, for reporting things that Donald Trump doesn't like, that sort of thing, right? That is exactly right. A school teacher has lost her job after a TikTok she posted went viral. Let's check out the clip that sparked all the controversy. It was in a moment of high emotions and I shouldn't have ever posted the video. Just because you won doesn't mean we don't remember who the f you voted for. You're not in the clear. And just please, please don't test your gangster on me because you will end on a stretcher, gone forever. And now you know that putting stuff on social media isn't the way to get Absolutely to elicit change. Right. Would you ever consider perhaps running for office or getting involved in something that would perhaps lead to change? Yes, I think that, you know, that was my initial thought of how I could make a change and how I could share my views. And clearly that is not the right way to go about it. Annie Dunleavy, we wish you the very best of luck and thanks Thank for you. sitting down Thank with us. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments what you think about everything that happened in today's video. I'd love to hear your thoughts whether you agree, disagree, or have a completely different perspective. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.